Thank you. Yeah. Now, now we will go to uh, Dr. Aditi Sharma, uh, Aditi Pandit. Uh, she is uh, in, she's joining us from uh, one of the European countries. Uh, Dr. Aditi, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can. Am I audible to you guys? Yes, you are audible to us. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Aditi Pandit, uh, for agreeing to give this presentation, uh, not only about fungi, also about uh, fungi associated bacteria. Uh, I think that is something we have been we haven't been doing in this session, this uh, World Fungus Day lecture series. Um, yeah, thank you very much for that. I request Dr. Romana Milde to introduce Dr. Uh, you know, Aditi Pandit to today's audience. Romana, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Aditi Pandit is a postdoctoral researcher at the University of South Bohemia in the Czechoslovakia Republic, Europe. She is currently working with the orchid mycorrhizal fungi to conserve wild orchid species across Europe. She has worked as a project associate, associate with Terry on the Government of India funded project. She has a master's degree in plant biotechnology from Terry University and a bachelor's degree in life sciences from Gargi College, Delhi University. Her expertise includes plant microbe interaction, mycorrhizal symbiosis and ecology. With this brief introduction, I welcome you, ma'am, and it's over to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm really honored to be uh, part of this uh, lecture series and thank you uh, for inviting me and it's a great pleasure uh, so I will just present my slides uh, is the presentation visible uh, maybe it may, may be loading yeah it is loading now thank you yeah yeah uh, just let me know whenever it is visible so then I can move it is visible now yeah Okay, so uh, as introduced, I'm working as a postdoc in University of South Bohemia in Czech. And today I will be presenting my work from my PhD uh, project, which I completed last year. So the title of the presentation is Diversity and Functional Behavior or Vascular Mycorrhizal Fungi and Their Associated Bacteria. Today I will give you a very brief background because, because most of it is known to because of the same background. So we have above ground and below ground scenarios. And here we are focusing on the below ground scenario where we have the rhizosphere in which we have the plant roots, which is associated with many different microorganisms. And these microorganisms can be beneficial or neutral or can be harmful to each other or to the plant development. And these can include vascular mycorrhiza fungi, different bacteria, which are known as PGPRs, phosphate or nitrogen solubilizing bacteria, algae, viruses, protozoans. But here we are focusing on the bacteria which are stringently associated with the mycorrhizal fungi. And uh, we gave this new terminology, AMF associated bacteria, which is AAD. Uh, in literature until date, there is a lot of literatures on uh, association and beneficial bipartite interactions between plant roots and AMF and plant roots and bacteria. And we all know that these microorganisms help in the plant development for, let's say, for the nutrient uptake, for water uptake and tolerance against various biotic and abiotic stresses. They not only support the plant system, but they are also helpful for the soil structures and fertility so this is very well known and there are many different products such as uh, like biofertilizers which are made of either amf or bacteria but the thing which was unknown is basically the tripartite interactions between the roots the mycorrhiza and the associated bacteria so my aim was to uh, solve this problem where we have uh, the tripartite interaction between these three uh, microorganisms and if there is some interaction then how they are beneficial to each other. So the research questions which we aimed were to 
first see that whether the fungal and plant symbiosis harbor the bacteria and if there is bacteria does they grow with the aseptically grown amf cultures so we can grow a mycorrhiza uh, culture into two conditions one is the in situ conditions where we have the whole plant in a soil substrate and the second one is the in vitro conditions where we have only the synthetic media and there is no whole plants it's only the roots and the mycorrhiza so we were uh, more uh, uh, concern about the bacteria which can grow under uh, the aseptic conditions with the mycorrhiza and if there is uh, bacteria can they form biofilm what are their functional relevance and can we recreate such naturally existing system uh, under in vitro conditions and we aimed for the identification of some uh, bacterial strains with their functional relevance and development of the consortia to by keeping all these hypotheses and research questions in mind our first objective which we published was to basically screen identify identify and characterize the bacteria which is associated with the mycorrhizal fungi so uh, i worked in terry which is the energy and the resources institute and the campus is based in gurgaon for the bar toll road so it's basically have its own germ plasm for both in situ and in vitro uh, cultures so this is how the cultures look so we took nine from in situ conditions and 24 so we had total of 33 amf cultures and we isolated the spores out of these different amf cultures the cleaning of the spores was done it was done for two main reasons first is to remove the uh, obviously the soil debris or the synthetic media attached with the spores and secondly we were uh, focusing on the stringently associated bacteria so we had to remove the loosely attached ones so after the cleaning of the spores we put those spores on bacterial specific different medias and based on the morphology of the bacteria we did the purification till the time we got single colonies and followed by dna sequencing uh, dna isolation pcr and then the sequencing so uh, from this from these 33 MF cultures, we got 231 bacteria which were associated. We had to reduce the number of AABs because basically we reduced the duplicacy of the bacterial cultures. So duplicacy means let's say from Xylospora decipens, we have two bacillus filamentosis and they were morphologically similar. So we reduced one so from 231 we went to 109 bacteria that we isolated and this is the uh, division of the genus that we obtained uh, out of 109 we got 69 uh, bacteria which were associated on the surface of the mycorrhizal structures uh, but also we got 40 uh, bacteria which were present as endobacteria that is they remain in the cytoplasm that is inside the uh, spores so this was the distribution then the uh, dominant uh, genus were bacillus microbacterium pseudomonas thingomonas and staphylococcus also to our surprise out of these 33 amf cultures we got two uh, root lines which is roc7 and roc40 and both are rhizosphagus irregularis and they were devoid of any bacterial associations we confirmed this through molecular and microscopic analysis and they were just devoid of any bacteria uh, and this gave us the lead to our second objective which was the recreation but before that we had to do the quantitative functional analysis of these isolated aabs so as we know that bacteria are helpful and they act as pgpr so we studied different pgpr traits which includes the micro the macronutrient analysis such as nitrogen phosphorus potassium and then we have fight it for uh, iron is sidrophore assays we did two enzymatic act activities for amylase and cellulase and did the uh, analysis against three plant pathogenic fungi which is rhizoctonia fusarium and collectrophytum uh, next we did two qualitative analysis for ia production and for biofilm assay formation because we are more focused on the capability of these bacteria to form biofilm so these number denotes the num uh, the bacteria which are positive for each trait
uh, and we got gram positive, gram negative, and gram variable bacterial strains. And these two strains, which is BF311 and Teribacillus uh, BF4A4, possessed nine uh, traits uh, out of 10 that we studied. And none of the bacteria was devoid of any functional traits, which means it had at least one of the traits that we studied. Coming to the next, we were uh, we isolated, we characterized, and we did the functional analysis. Then we were concerned then how actually these bacteria look with the mycorrhizal structures. So we did three different microscopic analysis. First is this called focal laser scanning microscopy. And we again have the sterile spores, which is that the treated spores. So these bacteria which uh, can be viewed are the ones which are stringently associated. So we took the samples, we stained them. And as you can see, the green ones are the live bacteria, where is, whereas the red ones, which are very less in number, are marked with white arrow or the dead bacteria. And we can see that bacteria are attached like biofilm. Basically, biofilm is like a sheet of bacteria which spreads through the abiotic or biotic surface. So we can see that bacteria was actually spread throughout the hyphal spores and uh, uh, mycorrhizal spores and hyphae and this was that ruc7 which i was talking about and it had no uh, bacteria which was associated so next we had to confirm that what's actually the uh, morphology of these associated bacteria for that scanning electron mic microscopy was used we again utilized the sterile spores and for scanning electron microscopy again the procedure is that the sample has to undergo like 9 to 10 washing with ethanol, but still we were able to confirm the presence of the bacteria, which definitely confirmed that these are stringently associated with the mycorrhizal structures. And we can see that there is bacteria like single cells, clusters, or biofilm sheet on the surface of the spores. So when the bacteria starts to form biofilm, it starts to get attached to a particular surface and then it secretes many polysaccharides and uh, uh, polysaccharides in order to form a ma matrix where they can uh, get attached and that matrix give its more stability and make it more stronger and here we were able to uh, see some of the matrix which was produced definitely by the uh, bacteria and again rc7 it was devoid of any bacterial uh, association because we had an idea that our cultures has endobacteria because we uh, got 40 endobacterial uh, iso uh, bacterial isolates so we had to do transmission electron microscopy so tem allow us to sections section the sample and we can see what's uh, inside the sample so uh, here we got rod and cocci shaped bacteria associated with uh, within the uh, cytoplasm of the uh, spores and if we look again rc7 was devoid of any bacterial strains so here ends the first screening characterization and uh, the all analysis then we had the plan to basically recreate because at times if some industry or any farmer requires a specific bacterial strains with a specific property like he requires something like which can solidize more phosphorus according to the soil properties. So we had to try different combinations. So we here selected uh, 11 AABs and these are the one AABs that we selected. And as a reference strains, we selected Brady rhizobium japonicum, which is a uh, isolate, which is isolated from soya bean roots. So we kept it as a reference strain. Rest, these are isolated from the mycorrhiza. So I will explain you this experimental setup, which is known as bicompartment or divide plate assay. It is very well known for root organ cultures of mycorrhiza. Here we have a normal 90 mm plate, but it has a plastic barrier in between, which divides the plate into two halves. And normally in the root compartment, we have the mycorrhizal colonized root where we use the ROC7 because we know that it's 
devoid of any bacteria and it won't hamper the results because we are going to inoculate our uh, bacteria of interest. So in the root compartment, we have the root mycorrhizal spores and hyphae, whereas in the hyphal compartment, we have only mycorrhizal spores and hyphae and our bacteria. We don't allow roots to go from the root compartment to the hyphal compartment. So this is basically our treatment set. Then we have control and obviously one control, we don't have any bacteria which we inoculated. And in the second control, we have only bacteria and no roots and no mycorrhizae. So we, and this is how the plates looks after inoculations. So, uh, and we are basically trying to look first for the interactions, which we named as biofilm segments. So I will explain you what's biofilm segments. So when you inoculate the root in the hyphal compartment, it takes around 30 days to move from root to the hyphal compartment. And once the hypha crosses this plastic barrier and get interacts with the inoculated bacteria the bacteria tends to grow along the growing hyphae and these mark segments or you can see this picture is actually the biofilm segment in which we were really interested in whether there is interaction which is happening with our bacteria or not so uh, we have we do have observations from 30 60 90 days but here i will be showing you observations from 120 days so here we have the uh, normal stereo microscopic analysis where we just captured the interaction regions between our inoculated bacteria and the hyphae and uh, hyphae here are terms as highways because it helps bacteria to move along wherever it finds the uh, mycelium so we can see different morphology of the bacteria and it doesn't constrain to a single uh, uh, hyphae it just colonize whatever hyphae it finds on its way and it starts to move and even spores were colonized so these pictures just uh, depict that there is interaction or the colonization which is happening between the mycorrhizal hyphae spores and our inoculated bacteria and we have this control where there was no bacteria so obviously it's devoid of any bacterial associations next to confirm this we actually uh, went to confocal uh, laser scanning microscopy and uh, we got these beautiful results where actually we can see that basically it's time dependent so uh, it's not that uh, uh, bacteria just colonize the hypha and it forms a biofilm so obviously it it get attached first so we can see single cell and then a layer of single cells then layer of multi uh, cells and then basically biofilm which forms a tar like structure so we can see that uh, different scenarios of all these combinations and you can see that bacteria is interacting in between two hyphae that is it's forming biofilm with every hyphae that it receives also one of the thing or the uh, characteristic that we observe uh, with root organ cultures in synthetic media is because of the carbon stress condition because in the hyphal compartment there is no sucrose or the carbon source so mycorrhiza is in stress condition so it basically forms a hyphal coil so the hypha just make a coil and here we were able to capture the biofilm formation on the hyphal coil as well then again we had to confirm this association uh, through sem although we lost many association because yes it was fresh biofilm form but and there is uh, n number of ethanol washings but we were able to capture the association of the bacteria and even matrix uh, during the same analysis so these are the pictures where can we can see the association of our inoculated bacteria and the spores and this is the control one without any bacterial presence we also did the stem analysis and uh, with few strains very few uh, cultures we were able to retrieve the bacteria inside the endobacteria here i'm not showing that result but you can refer to the paper it has all the images so we were uh, okay with the colonization part but then came to our mind that what all benefits does the bacteria is given to the mycorrhiza and vice versa so to clarify the first point, we have to see the impact of 
bacteria on the mycorrhiza and one of the uh, one of the main parameter for any mycorrhizal researcher is the sporulation parameters because the more uh, sporulation the more beneficial it is for the plants so we took the control where there was no bacteria and only the amf culture and then we have the blue ones where we have mycorrhiza and the bacteria and then we have these ones with the arrows are the cultures which showed more sporulation uh, compared to the control sets and surprisingly we have this reference strain which came which was not a uh, amf isolated strain it came from a root uh, source but even though it was able to enhance the sporulation so uh, and rest two of the strains bf410 and 390 showed almost similar sporulation than the control and four of these strains showed less sporulation uh, which i think is it's pretty normal because every strain cannot enhance uh, all properties in one go so these are the distribution which i already explained for the sporulation next we had to look for the opposite thing that is how amf is helping the bacteria so one of the major thing which is known as the phosphates uh, phosph phosphate solubilization which amf provides to the plant and even bacteria do so so here we took the samples of the bacteria the blue ones are the treatment set where we took the bacteria which was associated with the amf structures and control are the bacteria where there is no amf so it's only the bacteria and we can see that most of the phosphate solubilization was seen when the bacteria is isolated from the amf structures so this can be due to the secretions of different amino acid root exudates and change in ph that the enhancement of the phosphate solubilization was happening with most of the bacterial strains. Also, next we had to look the biofilm forming capability because uh, once the combination or con we have to make a consortia, one of the thing is the shelf life and the uh, stability of the bacteria. So for that, biofilm formation is one of the main thing that we need to consider. And again, we took bacteria from the treatment set in the presence of amf and from the control set the yellow one without any amf it's only the bacteria and again for the results we can see that the bacteria which was isolated in the presence of amf showed more uh, capability to form biofilm than the ones without any amf so definitely there is beneficial interactions which is happening between the mycorrhiza and the bacteria so the conclusion which we came to that we were firstly able to uh, isolate a wide diversity of the bacterial species of the bacteria and we were able to access their functional roles which can be definitely helpful for the plant growth development and then we were able to recreate a natural system which is existing in a soil into in vitro conditions and we played with a single species of mycorrhiza and different uh, bacterial strains but moreover if one needs to go in more details there is a lot yet needs to be done one can work on endobacteria one can choose different uh, bacterial strains or uh, he or she can just switch the amf species that we use so there is still a lot of things like which needs to be done and then comes the molecular things which we uh, worked on but not in that uh, depth and uh, uh, after i left my phd this uh, one of the product which came because terry has a production house for uh, the mycorrhizal uh, biofertilizers so with a chumble fertilizer company they uh, produce this uttam superizer which was basically for garden plants and it's available on amazon and uh, it this products basically have few of the strains which i have just showed you so and as earlier told that uh, this was the work which i did in my phd so these were two objectives uh, basically i had four so i just showed two of them and these are my phd supervisors from terry india and from deakin university australia 
And currently, I'm working with Yana Yerkasova in Czech Republic, and we are working on the conservation of orchids through orchid mycorrhizal fungi. And if you need to contact me for any clarifications or some collaborations or writing work, you can definitely contact me uh, on LinkedIn or Twitter. And that's all. Thank you. And I'm very happy to take up any kind of questions. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Aditi Pandit. Oh, that was an awesome presentation. Uh, oh, I think uh, we will have many questions for you. First, Rajeshri, could you please ask the question? I want to know that recently on mycorrhiza, there are a lot of work about the common symbiotic signaling pathway. Uh, that is the uh, sequence of events that happen inside the plant. But I want to know that when mycorrhizal colonization happen, uh, what changes happen in the fungal, what molecular sequences happen in the fungal, uh, fungal cells or the fungal hyphae? Uh, uh, is there any report on that? Uh, no. So this is what I was saying that till now what is known is basically the interaction which is happening and it's beneficial that is only confirmed. But what actually is happening when this colonization or interaction happens on the molecular lines, that's something which is not done. We tried to do it, but obviously it takes maybe another PhD to solve because it's a huge mystery. So no reports are there till date on what you are asking. So this is one Thank aspect so on which one can work, definitely. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. Mr. Arvind, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Ma'am, uh, the presentation was very grateful and uh, the picture was excellent uh, and it was marvelous. Uh, my question is, uh, you had a uh, numerous, like uh, you, uh, the picture showing the biofilm formations. So after treating the uh, samples with the uh, ethanol, and uh, again, it shows a biofilm formation. So usually when uh, we treat with the ethanol, uh, which is more than 75 percentage, uh, the EPS is usually dissolves. Uh, so but even there also, there you have resulted showing of uh, biofilm formation. So my doubt arises where uh, there is a decrease from the original to uh, original after treating the um, uh, sample with the ethanol or the, the biofilm formation is being moderated even though treating with ethanol. Yes, because definitely once we see the actual plates under stereo microscopy, even without the microscope, you can vis like view the um, biofilm formation with your naked eyes. So definitely the amount of bacterial association get reduced for okay. the same analysis, but I optimize it for the confocal. I did not let my samples go through any sectioning or any disturbance. And that is why you can see more of bacterial association in my confocal images than in SEM images, because in SEM we had those rounds of so, washings of ethanol. Okay, like may I know the percentage so that uh, the optimization is being achieved? Uh, for the SEM you are asking? Uh, for the both the same and the other thing other uh, microscopy okay so this is something which is the property right of terry <laughs> so oh, i okay, cannot fine. tell that... you the details of that oh, i'm so sorry about fine. it okay yeah i mean another com other doubt is uh, you mentioned about the biofilm uh the graph what you showed there you have right. said about a answer of the biofilm formation you have just mentioned about the cfu the colony per unit so my doubt is like uh, uh, how, how the procedure is carried out. So you scratch out the cell or you disturb the uh, biofilm matrix from the sample and you just go for the CFU count or uh, how that mm -hmm. can be achieved. Right. So how it's right, achieved. Right. Yeah? You, you are you're absolutely right. When we see the biofilm segment, we just scratch the bacteria. Okay. We let them grow and then we optimize the OD that is like similar for all, all the bacteria that we are isolates isolating and then for the biofilm formation we have this crystal violet assay which yeah. is a quantitative assay so we basically optimize all the bacterial strains it's not random so we set the cfu and the od of the bacteria and then oh. do the analysis so when when the cfu is calculated then it becomes as a plantonic cell then the biofilm cell so the biofilm which states that it's not only the cell even the extracellular and other polysaccharide which is present over it so we call it as biofilm but when you right. scratch it and you go for uh, uh, 
uh, when you scratch it off, then we'll define it as a plantonic cell. So how we can right. state it is a biofilm? Oh, that my question. Uh, just it was curious to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. That's perfectly fine because you are true uh, with the statement. But it's the only way which we thought that we which we can do because okay. this is the only things which are present in literature. But now, uh, there are few instruments and which I came through through my some of the conferences over here, and they have like biofilm sensors where you can just put those instrument on the biofilm which is formed and it can sense various nitrogen carbon uh, and ph and stuff like that but okay. uh, not the biofilm formation uh, okay. capability so that was the only options or the literature experiment that we could have performed okay thank you dr sunil srivastava please yeah uh, yeah aditi nice work uh, thank you uh, two questions uh, one uh, as to which are the major uh, uh, players for this consortia that you have developed at terry which are the mm -hmm. best bacterial isolates uh, which species are the those which are the best ones uh, that you have used sir again it comes to the uh, some protective act from the terry oh, so it's uh, it's not revealed is it no, because when you even when you go to like big companies which has numerous okay. products, they don't reveal the exact uh, uh, name of the. They would say it's Rhizophagus irregularis. Or, so for that matter, it's obviously R no, I for the bacterial the species. And bacteria is basically some of the filamentosus, uh, Philobacterium, and Terribacillus. So it's a consortia. Okay. Of the yes, because right. all. Traits are different mm -hmm. for all the bacteria. And so, the uh, exactly. orchid and uh, mycorrhizal association is very obligate, you know. And uh, yeah, do, yes. do you find any biofilm of some bacteria also there in with case of orchids? Because uh, I don't think anybody yes. has looked into it. No, no, so, no. People tried. Even that was my aim when I joined postdoc over here because I mm -hmm. worked with this AMF and I suggested this with my current right. supervisor. And we are working on it. Because I believe it's not because after working with AMF, I just believe it's not only AMF which is helping the plants, it's mm. bacteria, AMF and the plants. So definitely there can be some associations of bacteria yeah. with the orchid mycorrhiza fungi, but it's very difficult. Because the orchid to, won't uh, germinate yes. even, you know, so yeah, I, right. I, right. I believe that there must be an association of bacteria which is making it uh, yeah association with that and yes, my last yes. question is the the rhizophagus uh, which doesn't form a bacterial colony at all mm -hmm. did you find any chemicals like which were inhibiting the bacterial growth could you see any uh, no 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 but one uh, thing which is possible because these are all cultivable bacteria then hmm. the other another scenario can be non cultivable one, ones because it's very difficult to cultivate non cultivable bacteria because we have not looked into it but no we didn't look uh, on the perspective that you are uh, suggesting okay thank you great work all the best thank you so much sir thank you last question is from uh, anandavid Yes, uh, very nice presentation, ma'am. It was a very good presentation. Uh, ma'am, actually, a very general question that in my PhD, I did work with mycorrhiza, and that was uh, uh, earlier name was global. And uh, I'm really sorry, you were not audible. Can you just say it again? Hello, ma'am. Hello. Yes, I can hear you, but it's not clear. The, your voice is breaking in between. So you're asking about your PhD work on? Yes, hello, ma'am. Ma'am, in my PhD, I, uh, yes, yeah, I use I Glomus Sintra radicus. Actually, very common question I want to ask you that. Uh, in my PhD, I use mm -hmm. Glomus Sintra radicus, and now it is called as a rhizophagus irregularis, right? So, ma'am. Right. Uh, according to taxonomy, what exactly we have to write? Glomus interradicus or rhizophagus irregularis have to write in the manuscript or in uh, paper? Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, uh, every time you can uh, like do two things, which is you can write the current nomenclature, which is RI, and in bracket you can write that it was previously known as 
glomus intralatices. So this is what I did in my paper. So you can refer to that because with okay. our papers also there were a few bacterial strains also for which there was no uh, nomenclature. So you can mention both. Because once I, yes, yes. Because once I talked with uh, Dairy sir, Dr. Uh, Alok Adolaya sir, uh, I called once yeah, him regarding yeah. mm -hmm. that. And Chaitali ma'am also I talked with her regarding this thing. So okay. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. A very. Uh, it's obviously a very... uh, convenient for all the researchers because sometimes new nomenclatures are not known to the. I would say. Yes. The, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. It's better to mention both. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. No problem. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for that wonderful discussion. Now, thank you, Dr. Aditi Pandit, uh, for the thank wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. For the presentation so and, the, and the kind of efforts you have done in preparing the slides and you know and the wonderful interactions we had and the very useful insights we have received from you uh, we hope to see you at micro india again and again uh, thank you very much yes for oh, sure thank you so much thank you uh, now i request dr rajesh jivan from university of mauritius to, to join us uh, for his presentation